أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد إن شاء الله we're starting with آية 105 of سورة النساء الله عز وجل says إنا أنزلنا إليك الكتاب بالحق لتحكم بين الناس بما أراك الله ولا تكن للخائنين خاصيما so let's go through the literal translation and we'll go through the reason, you know, one of the reasons of um, uh, this ayah being revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, and what is the intent. So Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Inna anzalna ilayka al-kitab. Indeed, we have sent down to you and this ayah is specific to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is still a general um, uh, ruling or understanding of this ayah, but it is specific to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah is saying, Verily we have sent down to you, O Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the book بالحق, with, in truth. This is a true book coming from Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? لِتَحْكُمَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِمَا أَرَاكَ اللَّهِ So you judge between people, between mankind, with what Allah Azza wa Jal has made you see and recognize. And here, أَرَاكَ Allah does not mean he sees in his eye. He sees in his heart through the wahi of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah has guided him and he made him see righteousness from falsehood. So Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَلَا تَكُلْ لِلْخَائِنِينَ خَصِيمًا And do not, uh, um, the الْخَائِنِينَ خَصِيمًا here, um, so don't argue with those who, الْخَائِن is the one who, the, those who betray, those who betray their religion, betrayed your commandments, betrayed Allah Azza wa Jal, don't argue with them. Don't, you know, uh, deal with them. So, what is the story behind this ayah? There's a story. So, there's a man, and his name is, uh, uh, his name is, I forgot his name here, but it's written somewhere here. Uh, Ubayrak, Ubayrak, he, he was a thief. So he stole. And when he was known to have stolen. <coughs> so they wanted to bring him so the Prophet ﷺ would judge on his, with, with what he has done. You know, and the, 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 the punishment was to cut his hand. So he ran away. He didn't want to take the judgment and he didn't want to follow the Prophet Muhammad He ran away and he went to Mecca. And when he was stealing in Mecca again, he was stealing there, a wall fell onto him and died. And Allah Azza wa Jal killed him. So he died on, the, according to um, the tafsir here, he died, he died as a murtad. Because he refused to adhere to the commandment of Allah. He refused to get ear to the judgment of Allah, of his, Allah and his Prophet. So Allah says, we have sent you to judge in truth. So judge between mankind with what Allah Azza wa has guided you. Don't follow what desires these people and those people. So we as Muslims, we judge according to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam judge according to what Allah Azza wa shows him and guides him. Because he's guided by Allah Azza wa And this ayah, that's why it says, Bima araq Allah, with what Allah Azza wa has made you see. And do not argue with those because what happened he was claiming that a Jew man was the one who stole so he was trying to defend himself so in front of the Prophet of Allah of uh, the message of Allah Azza wa Jal, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he does he cannot hide the truth so Allah told him he was the one who stole the Prophet knows he's the one who stole no matter what he told you don't argue with him because he is the thief and then the the Prophet can do that we can't do that. That's why this is a specific ayah to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because unless we have evidence, we can't, you know, harm and judge people. But the Prophet can because Allah will guide him. SubhanAllah. وَاسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا And then Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, Seek forgiveness from your, from your Lord. If you have made commit a sin, ask Allah. And know that Allah Azza wa Jal, when you ask His forgiveness, Allah is the most forgiving and He is the most merciful. وَلَا تُجَادِلْ عَنِ الَّذِينَ يَخْتَانُونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحُبُّ مَنْ كَانَ خَوَّانًا أَثِيمًا And do not 
argue with regard to those who are uh, um, means uh, um, those who are betraying themselves by disobeying Allah and this is all related to the same incident the one who stole so don't go and argue you know about those who who, who have uh, betrayed themselves verily Allah does not love those who betray who are betrayals and those who are constantly committing sins so if I commanded you to to do a hukum and to do an order obey it and do it and but this man managed to run away somehow then yes then Allah continues and talking about this type of people not just specific this man but this ayah came these ayat came for this man so they try to hide away from mankind but they they're not even they don't fear Allah to try to hide away from Allah where can you hide away from Allah even if you try to hide away from Allah can you hide from Allah nobody can hide from Allah and then Allah says and Allah is with them while they're at night trying to plotting and planning things that Allah is not pleased with they want to steal here they want to do this they want to harm people they want to do do the wrong do, do wrongdoings that Allah is not pleased with and harm people and they don't th they don't think that Allah is with them wherever they go and indeed Allah encompasses everything that they do he sees everything that they do he's well aware of everything that they do they cannot hide away from Allah then Allah goes and he says so those people who defended those people who are trying no these people are good but they don't know that they're hiding you know from you know that they're hiding the truth from people so Allah says you are trying to argue with regard to their issues in this worldly life who's going to argue for them on the day of Qiyamah who's going to argue with Allah with regard to their issues on the day of Qiyamah or who's going to take care of them on that day who's going to be in charge of them on that day so subhanallah you cannot hide from Allah Azza wa Jal and you cannot try to make an excuse in front of Allah Azza wa Jal then Allah Azza wa Jal here is telling us and then showing us the the uh, uh, subhanallah the, the the vastness of his mercy and how Allah Azza wa Jal can can forgive everything and these ayat are very very indeed you know very important and Allah Azza wa Jal says وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا أَوْ يَظْلِمْ نَسَّةً ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهِ يَجِدْ اللَّهِ غَفُورَ رَحِيمٌ Whoever does ظلم and ظلم in most uh, uh, in the Quran means shirk to Allah Azza wa Jal whoever commits shirk to Allah does things like very arrogant thinks of himself more than anybody else or do you know do things that are not pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal يَعْمَلْ سُوء he commits a sin so whoever commits a ma'asiyah things that is Allah Azza wa Jal is not pleased with things that Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't want you to do and or you commit sin or you commit shirk and after that you ask Allah's forgiveness you will see that Allah Azza wa Jal the oft forgiving the most merciful and then here uh, uh, there's a hadith from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says uh, Ali radiallahu anhu, according, it was narrated by Ali radiallahu anhu that he says if I have mem if I have heard any hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that Allah Azza wa Jal has benefited me from this hadith uh, uh, and, and if I he heard I either I heard it directly from him or I heard it from someone else I made them swear on it if that they heard from Prophet Muhammad and he says that Abu Bakr the companion from Muhammad uh, and to, indeed and Ali is saying was Sadaq Abu Bakr indeed Abu Bakr is Sadiq Allah says he is truthful said ma min abdin yadnibu dhanban thumma yatawadda not a single servant of Allah 
that commits a sin. After that, he goes does wudu. ويصلي ركعتين and he does two ركع صلاة ويستغفر الله and he asks Allah's forgiveness إلا غفر له except that Allah عز وجل will guarantee that he will forgive him ثم تلا هذه الآية and then he recited this ayah he says whoever commits sin or whoever commit small shirk with Allah عز وجل unintended shirk with Allah عز وجل then he does استغفرت الله عز وجل will find that Allah is always there most for oft forgiving most merciful then Allah Azza wa Jal continues, وَمَنْ يَكْسِبْ إِثْمًا فَإِنَّمَا يَكْسِبُ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ And whoever commits a sin, then he's committing that sin against himself. Why? Because he's doing this to himself. Because if you're not going to get ask, you know, get the forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal, if you're not going to ask forgiveness, you're the one who's going to pay for it eventually. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا Indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal is well aware of everything. He's the most wise. وَمَنْ يَكْسِبْ خَطِيئَةً أَوْ إِثْمًا ثُمَّ يَرْمِي بِهِ بَرِيئًا فَقَدْ احْتَمَلَ بُتَانًا وَإِثْمًا وَبِنًا And whoever commits a sin or commits a mistake So خطيئة is a mistake You do a sin unintentionally When we're talking about the sins before You did a sin and it was intentional So you did something wrong and you knew it was wrong But then you ask Allah's forgiveness And you actually repent Allah will forgive you here Allah Azza wa Jal says, whoever commits a sin, intentional, may yaksib khatiya, first a sin that is unintentional, aw isman, or an intentional sin, thumma yarmi bihi bari'an, and then he goes and accuses, is, and accuses an innocent man, or an innocent woman, with what he's done. So let's say you stole, and you accuse someone else, or you did this harm, and you accuse someone else, you did something wrong, and you accuse someone else. Who is innocent? فَقَدْ اِحْتَمَلَ بُهْتَانًا وَإِثْمًا مُبِينًا Here Allah Azza wa Jalla says that this person is caring, is 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 responsible, and he has been it has been written on him بُهْتَان, which is a huge great sin, one of the kabar. وَإِثْمًا and a sin مُبِينًا very clear evidence sin. So falsehood, testifying falsely against someone, is one of the greatest sins in Islam. وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ وَرَحْمَتُهُ And if it wasn't for the favor that Allah Azza wa Jal has bestowed upon you, O Messenger of Allah, and His mercy, لَهَمَّ الطَّائِفَةُ مِّنْهُمْ أَيُّ دَلُّكَ A group of them would have, would have misguided you. Because they would have said, it's a Jewish man, he wasn't the one who stole, it was someone else. They, would, they were trying to actually testifying falsely to prove this man innocent, and this man was not innocent. They would have misguided you, and indeed, وَمَا يَضُلُّونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَضُلُّونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ They would not misguide except themselves. وَمَا يَضُرُّونَكَ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And they will never harm you with a single bit. وَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَعَلَّمَكَ مَا لَمْ تَكْنْ تَعْلَمْ And indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed upon you, O Messenger of Allah, the book and the wisdom, and He has taught you what you knew not. All the knowledge that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had, all the knowledge that we have, all the knowledge that we have combined on the face of the earth is the knowledge from Allah Azza wa Jal and the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah is the one who taught us what we knew not. وَكَانَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ عَظِيمًا Indeed, the favor that Allah has bestowed upon you, O Messenger of Allah, is so great. SubhanAllah. So then, so, so basically here, one, one thing that is very important is that the, the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal is never, you know, never going to go away. If you repent and if you make a mistake, you ask Allah's forgiveness, Allah will always forgive you. SubhanAllah. So then, and, and then here the, the ayat will continue in the subject. He says, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس ومن يفعل ذلك في اتغاء مرضات الله فسوف نؤتيه أجرا عظيما. So we talked about the sins and one of the sins is talking in the back of your brother or a woman or her sister whatever. So you're talking something that your brother is not pleased with doesn't want you to talk about on their in their behind while they're not here. So if you're doing that, 
they asked the Prophet ﷺ, if you are, you know, but if, if we're saying, what, whatever we're saying about this person is true. He said, this is ghiba. This is talking ill in their back, even though if it's true. But if it wasn't true, it would be a buhtan. It would be similar to like testifying falsely, testifying zur, falsehood. It's one of the greater sin. So when you're talking in the back of someone, and if you're talking the truth, is ghiba. If you're talking the untruth, is zur, is falsehood. And that is one of the greater sins that people can get. So then Allah Azza wa Jal says, now that we justified, and we, I mean we defined what ghiba is, then Allah Azza wa Jal says, there is this other level of talking while people are not there, which is accepted by Allah. And he says, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم. It is, there is no, there is no goodness in most discussion, in secrecy, while people are out, about, are not here, which is ghiba. Most ghiba, there is no good in them. These are not, Allah will not be pleased with them. Except, there is an exception. So the only time you can be talking about someone while they are not, not there, to do what? إِلَّا مَنْ أَمَرَ بِصَدَقَةً so you're trying to order people to do sadaqah, to do, to do something that is good, that Allah Azza wa Jal will be pleased with, which is giving, giving in charity, giving in, in time, giving in whatever it is, you're doing that, and then you're saying, well, look at this man, he was here yesterday and he donated a lot of money. It is okay to speak about that. Aw ma'roof, or you're trying to promote goodness, you're trying to promote a good behavior. Or إصلاح بين الناس, or you're trying to reconcile between people. So you t well, you're t two brothers fighting. They're not talking to each other. You come, well, I saw him, and he was good, and he was saying good things about you, even though you might be lying that he truly didn't say. Really, you know, you're exaggerating the truth and not lying. It is okay because you're trying to bring people closer together, because the shaitan wants them away, and Allah wants them close together. And whoever does this, purely because they're seeking the pleasure of Allah. They want Allah to be pleased with them. They're not doing it because other people says, look at this man, what he's done. Look at this woman, what she's done. We're going to give them a great reward, which is Jannah. And all the pleasure and the favors from Allah. Then Allah says, on the other hand, وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى And whoever goes and transgress against the Messenger of Allah after the guidance has been very very clear to him. So the Prophet told him to do this. Don't do that. Don't steal. Like this man, he went against the Prophet. He continues to steal. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى After the, the, the guidance has been very clear to him. وَيَتَّبَعَ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And he follows the way other than the way of the believers. So he went against the believers, followed his own desires, the way of the kuffar, نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى We're going to guide him to where, where he, was, he wants to be guided, which is what? Misguidance. He wanted misguidance, he wanted the guidance of the misbelievers, so we're going to guide him their way, and he's going to be misguided. وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمُ وَسَاءَتْ مصيرة. جَهَنَّمَ And we will make him as his reward, he's going to be taken toward Jahannam, hellfire, wasa'at masira, how evil of a place to end to. Then, then here Allah Azza wa Jal is concluding these ayat with this ayah, which it's very famous, a lot of people know about, and it says, Inna Allah la ila yaghfiru ayyushraka bi. Allah does not forgive those who commit shirk with Allah Azza wa Jal, meaning worshipping the idols, doing shirk, and worshipping others than Allah Azza wa Jal, this is different than dhulm. Shirk is the shirk. You know, you're worshipping other than Allah. Dhulm is also shirk, but sometimes you do it unwillingly, and I'm going to try to define both. In Allah, la yafiru ayyu shirkabi. Allah will not forgive those who attribute others besides Him. So those who worship Isa, Jesus, and they say He is God, that's shirk with Allah. Allah will never forgive that. And he forgives anything beyond that to whomever he pleases. 
So you could do any sin, you come clean to Allah, you ask His forgiveness, Allah will forgive you. In Islam, we don't have intermediary. We don't have to stand in front of people and ask people's forgiveness. The forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Except if you has taken something, something from someone, you need to give it back to them. Otherwise, you need to ask them, would you, you know, I don't have the ability to pay you your debt. I'm trying, would you forgive that debt for me? And that person, if they forgive you, that, that Allah will forgive you, inshallah. وَمَا يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ And whoever commits shirk with Allah Azza wa Jal, فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا Indeed, he has been misguided in a misguidance that is so far away. Like it's very, very, you know, he's totally away from the straight path of Allah Azza wa Jal. So before I, I continue the next ayah, I want to talk about the shirk and the zulm here for a second. So, zulm, for example, Sometimes at work, you're doing something, say, yes, I'm so smart, look what I've done. I did this, or I created this algorithm, and I wrote this computer program, or I uh, sold this many cars, I'm so smart, or I, or I did this, or I did that, or I, whatever it is that you've done, and you think you're like so great, this is part of the shirk. You're basically thinking you are the one who has made this thing happen, you are the one and if it wasn't for your ability and your brains and your wit and your, you know, and then you forget to recognize Allah Azza wa Jal, that is zulm, that is shirk with Allah Azza wa Jal. And you're doing that by worshipping yourself and forgetting about Allah Azza wa Jal. So how can we avoid this? What is the antidote or what is the medicine for this? SubhanAllah, I want to teach you three words. And if you say those three words, that's your antidote and that's your cure from shirk to Allah Azza wa Jal. Masha Allah, Alhamdulillah, SubhanAllah. Masha Allah, oh Masha Allah, look, I was able to create this program. I did it with the will of Allah. Masha Allah, it's this, Allah wills it to happen. So therefore, I successfully was able to solve this difficult algorithm. Masha Allah. And they say, Alhamdulillah, when something good happens, or something bad happens, or something, whatever it is, happen to you, you're thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal. You don't say, oh, thank you. You know, we don't thank other people. We say, Alhamdulillah. We say, Jazakallah khair. May Allah reward you. Because we don't thank people. Because they didn't, they did it, but they did it only with the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because Allah put them in the right time, at the right place, gave them the right, you know, environment, whatever it is. So when we are always recognizing Allah, saying, Alhamdulillah, Thank, thanking Allah for whatever. Or Alhamdulillah, Allah Azza wa Jal made me do this. Masha Allah. And this is very clear in an ayat in Surah Al-Kahf. Where the man thought that this is my Jannah. This is my garden. I spend, I hired people. I employ people. I had people working for me. They, you know, and, and I have, you know, dug here the water. So the, 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 the river will flow underneath my gardens. And then I can uh, keep my garden irrigated. And I'm a smart man. And I'm a good engineer. I'm an employer. I hire tons of people. You know, look at my garden. Nothing's going to happen to it. That's basically what he says in Surah Kaf. And then his, what happened? The next day, Allah destroyed the entire thing. And then his, his, his neighbor, his friend told him, If you had only, when you enter your shanna, your garden, you should have said, Ma sha Allah, this is the will of Allah. La quwwata illa billah, there is no power, there is no strength except through Allah Azza wa Jal. Then, no shirk would have happened to you, nothing would have happened to your garden. But because you thought you were able, it's your work, Allah took it away from you just like that. So, Ma sha Allah, Alhamdulillah, and SubhanAllah, you always glorify Allah. You see something beautiful, you see something amazing. SubhanAllah, glory be to Allah. Allah is the one who created this. You do this, you, you take all the shirk away from you. And the Prophet Sallallahu he says, the most thing that I fear on my ummah, on my nation, is shirk. It's not lack of resources, lack of wealth, lack of this, lack of that. It's shirk. Because this is the thing that people fall into that trap. And then they think that they are great and they, they, they forget to recognize Allah. And then they go into the term of dhulm. And then that, when you do that dhulm, do istighfar to Allah Azza wa Jal. Then recognize Allah and Allah Azza wa Jal will forgive you. So that's the antidote, that's the remedy for dhulm. 
right? But those who worship others than Allah, idols, people, and stuff like that. And, and today, oh, my idol is this rock star, or my idol, that's, wor that's shirk, that's complete shirk. I'm worshipping that rock star. I want to be just like that rock star. I want to be just like that sportsman, not like that basketball player. I idolize him. I, that's shirk with Allah. That's pure shirk. Subhanallah. But when you're doing things like, so you love the money so much, you know, that's also, that's the dhulm. That you're basically, you're wronging yourself by thinking that the love of the money becomes higher than the love of Allah. So you need, we need to be very careful of those. Then Allah says, Indeed, they are they are not calling beside Allah Azza wa Jal except females. So uh, and indeed they are not calling except a shaitan, the Satan, Marid, the one who went and transgressed against the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the people of Quraysh then they would call their gods and the things that they worship, Allah wa Uzza wa Manat and all of those you know names, they were based on female names. And they called also that Allah Azza wa Jal has the angels and the angels are females. So Allah Azza wa Jal says they're only calling names of females. That's what they worship. And then they follow a shaitan that is going against Allah Azza wa Jal. And what did the shaitan do? Lahanahullah. Allah has cursed the shaitan. And we stop here. There's a mandatory stop when you read. Allah has cursed the shaitan. And the shaitan said, And I'm going to take from your servant a portion for me. I want them to... to and I'm going to make it a must on me. I want a portion of your servant. I want him to worship me. So that's the shaitan. He made a covenant with Allah. He says, I'm going to go and try to deceive as many as I can. And we know that from the different stories of the shaitan of Allah Then, uh, Then what did the shaitan say? The first thing, I'm going to misguide them. I'm, not, I'm going to take them away from the straight path. And I'm going to make them want more things. I'm going to make, oh, I wish I did this. Oh, I wish I can have this. Oh, I wish I can. He's going to, he's going to come and touch on our desires. What is the thing that you desire the most? He's going to play on it and he's going to want you to want more, want more and forget about Allah Azza wa Jal. So first I'm going to misguide them. Then I'm going to make them want things that are not pleasing because they're already misguided. And then I'm going to command them to do what? I'm going to tell them, do this and do this, because then they become under his wing, under his command. Before, they can't, he can't. Allah says, Inna kayda shaytani kana da'ifa. Earlier in Surah an said that the plotting and the, and the evil planning of the shaytan is very weak. He, and Allah says in the Quran, Inna ibadi laysa lak alayhim sultan. My servant, you have no power unto them. So I'm going to try to, with my, with weak intentions, I'm going to, misguide them. Once they're misguided, Allah Azza wa has given him full power on them. So that I'm going to misguide them, I'm going to want them, make them want this and this and this, and then I'm going to command them to do whatever I want to do because now they're under my command. When I command them, they're going, I'm going to make them go cut the ears of the cattle. And here, there's multiple things in this. So basically, disfigure the cattle. So they will see a cattle or a sheep or a cow or a, or, a, or a camel that is not very healthy. They will go and then disfigure their ears and cut their ears. So Allah Azza wa Jal here is saying, this is evil to do. Why? Because first of all, they're harming the animals. It's painful. They're, at, you know, they're doing something that is not pleasing to Allah. These are living beings. And they're going and they're cutting their ears and disfiguring their ears and this. Uh, you know, and, and hurting the animals. Look, Islam comes and protect the animals. And then who made this? The shaitan ordered them. And then I'm going to command them again. And then they're going to disfigure and change the creation of Allah. So by disfiguring their, their, their ears, disfiguring this, disfiguring their bodies, disfiguring, you know, and you look at today all the plastic surgery and the stuff like this that they do 
that that are not medically necessary, they're doing it because the shaitan is commanding them to do that. Like ladies wants to enlarge their, you know, their, their looks and stuff like that, and they want to expose more of their body to this, please, you know, this is against the commandment of Allah Azza wa Jal, to follow the, their desires, the shaitan ordered them to do so, and this is all against the commandment of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَلَا يُغَيِّرُنَّ خَلْقَ اللَّهِ And they're going to change. And other explanation of this ayah is like they take the stone and then they kind of play with the stone and make the statues and worship those stones. So they're changing the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal to make things that are not pleasing. So this is another also interpretation of this ayah. فَلَا يُغَيِّرُنَّ خَلْقَ اللَّهِ وَمَن يَتَّخِذِ الشَّيْطَانَ وَلِيًّا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ خَسِرَ خُسْرَانَ مُبِينًا And whoever takes the shaitan as their wali, as their guide, as their, you know, to, to rely on him and to follow, besides Allah, indeed, he has lost a great amount of loss. Why? Because he's going to Jahannam and the shaitan has taken them to Jahannam. Then Allah Azza wa Jalla continues, says, يَعِدُهُمْ وَيُمَنِّيهِمْ all the shaitan does, and he promised them, and you may need him. And he wants, and he plays with their desires. Oh, I want this, I wish I can have that. You know, you go buy this, you think, you know, like, oh, you're like, I want to buy this, I really want this. You go buy it, mm. I need more, I need, you know, you're never satisfied. The shaitan is playing with your desires. And indeed, the shaitan is not promised in them, except ghurur, except pride. You know, I'm, look what I have, and look what I have, and this is all shirk with Allah Azza wa Jalla. jahannam. These, their abode is hellfire. Wala yajiduna anha mahisa. They will never find a way out from that hellfire. Then, on the other hand, waladina aman wa amilu salihat. Those who believe and did righteous deed, sanu dakhiluhum jannah. We're going to enter them into gardens of paradise. تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِيَ الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا Underneath it, river flows. They are there in it eternally forever. أَبَدًا وَعْضَ اللَّهِ حَقَّ This is the true promise from Allah. Allah has given us His promise, a truth from Him. You're going to live in Jannah eternally, promise from Allah by, his, by plainly obeying Allah and His messengers and disobeying the shaitan. وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا And who is most truthful, more truthful than Allah Azza wa Jal in any speech? Then Allah Azza wa Jal here, here continues, says, لَيْسَ بِأَمَانِيِّكُمْ وَلَا أَمَانِيِّ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ It is not upon your desire or the desires of the people of the book. It is not your decision or the decision of the people of the book. مَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا يُجْزَ بِهِ وَلَا يَجْلَ لَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا So don't think that you're Muslim or you're a Jew, or you're Christian, that because you're that religion, Allah has forgiven everything that you're doing. No. Don't think that you said, you, just by saying you're Muslim, Allah has forgiven you, and that's it. Nothing will harm you. So Allah Azza wa Jalla says, May يَعْمَلْ su, Whoever does harm, يُجِزَبِي is going to be punished accordingly. وَلَا يَجِدْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا And he will not find beside Allah Azza wa Jal anyone to take care of them or to help them. Unless you ask Allah's forgiveness and you pay it back for what you harmed other people. So there is two types of sins. There are the sins that if you go and steal from people or if you take a debt from someone and you don't pay them, you say, Allah forgive me. Allah might forgive you but Allah, on the day of Qiyamah, Allah will not let you go to Jannah unless that person takes their debt away from you, back from you, the things that you take. So the thing between mankind, you have to pay it back. So whoever does something to others, don't think you're just Muslims, you can go and harm other people, you can go steal from other people, you can take from other people, you can go cheat other people, you can do this. Say, oh, I ask Allah's forgiveness, Allah will forgive me. The things between mankind needs to be settled. Because on the day of Qiyamah, there is a scenario. I go and I steal from someone or I cheat someone. But I come and pray here all the time. And then what happens, that person sees, well, look at this man. You know, that other person is not Muslim. Oh, he goes to the masjid and he pretends he's Muslim, but look how he cheated me. Look at the kind of dealing I have with him. Look at this. That religion obviously is a bad religion. So on the day of Qiyamah, he's going to stand in front of Allah with this other man. 
And Allah will say, what did you do? I prayed and I did and I did and I did and I did. Allah will say, well, you did this to this man. He's going to tell the other man, okay, what do you want from him? He says, I want everything from him. Because if it wasn't for him, I would have probably become Muslim. I want all his good deeds to pay back. Maybe Allah will give him all his good deeds. And Allah will take that man into a fire. And maybe save the other man. Wallahu alam. So I'm not saying this is what's going to happen. But that's the danger of the behavior between mankind. So whoever does a wrong thing, okay, needs the debt need to be paid. Between you and Allah, جل, Allah can forgive anything. If it's something you're harming yourself, you're doing dhulm to yourself. Yadlim nafsahu. Thumma yastaghfirullah. You do dhulm to yourself by being proud, by doing this, by doing that, by, 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 by uh, you know, doing things that are not pleasing to Allah. That's between you and Allah. Allah can forgive anything. But between mankind, these debts need to be paid. Wallahu alam. And out of his mercy, Allah might forgive both and take them both in Jannah. Wallahu alam. If this man truly repented. Like if you've done something wrong and you couldn't pay and then indeed inside of you, you want to ask forgiveness, Allah will forgive you. Allah is the most forgiving, most merciful. But if you have the ability to pay back, you do. That's why in Islam, when someone dies, the first thing they do, they pay all their debts. So they have no debt between, you know, financial debt between them and other people. SubhanAllah. Before any miraf, before anybody inherits, the debts has to be paid. SubhanAllah. Then Allah says, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِنَ الصَّالِحَاتِ مِنْ ذَكَرِ وَنْأُنْثَى And whoever does righteous deeds, whether they're male or female, وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ And they are believers. And this is very important. فَأُولَئِكَ يَدُخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ وَلَا يُظْلَمُونَ نَقِيرًا They will enter Jannah and they will not be harmed. Naqira. What is Naqira? Naqira, you take the date. Inside the date, there is that uh, a seed inside. And that seed has a, uh, a curve inside, like... And inside of it, there's that little um, um, string. That string, Allah will not even, if you do good, or if you, Allah, Allah will reward you even to the smallest thing that you do in terms of goodness. And then here Allah says, when you do good deeds, and you are a believing man or a believing woman, you're a Muslim, you do salah, you do siyam, you are a believing Muslim and man or woman, Allah Azza wa Jal will not harm, you know, you will not be wrong, and your end, end is Jannah. Why? Because the kafir, the one who disbelieve, they can do good deeds in this life. They could help people. Allah Azza wa Jal says, those people will be rewarded their deeds in this life. And the hereafter, they have nothing. All their deeds become to null and they go to hellfire. The believer men and women, their good deeds, they will be rewarded and they will enter Jannah. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينًا مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنْ وَاتَّبَعَ مِرَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا There is no better way of following the religion than the one who submit his face completely to Allah in Islam and he is a good doer, he is a muhsin, he helps other, he is good in society, he helps the poor, he helps the needy, he helps the elderly, he is generous to his parents, he doesn't yell at them, and stuff like that. And follows the way of Prophet Ibrahim, who totally devoted himself to Allah in Islam. And then Allah says, And indeed, Allah has taken for himself Prophet Ibrahim as his most close beloved friend. So Allah says, Follow the way of my most close beloved friend, my Khalil. That's why we say Ibrahim Khalilullah. It is mentioned here in the Quran that he is the most close beloved friend of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal says the best form of religion is the one who is believer, who does ihsan to people, follow the true religion of Prophet Ibrahim, which is Islam. And why? Because Ibrahim is one of the most beloved and and in other ayat we will see that all the prophecies came down from Ibrahim alayhi salam then uh, so I'm gonna do one more ayah and I will stop inshallah we'll continue next week وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ and indeed to Allah belongs everything in the heavens and everything on earth 
وكان الله بكل شيء محيطا and indeed Allah is well aware of everything knows everything encompasses everything so don't try to hide from Allah don't try to to think you can cheat, cheat other people you can hurt other people you can pretend you're Muslim Allah is the one who knows and then inshallah next week it will be a discussion mainly about the hypocrites and then that's that's also you know there's a, a great deal of details here in Surah Nisa inshallah later about the hypocrites inshallah سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خير إن شاء الله